A few weeks ago, I got an email from Ranuri, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, who asked, how do you make and create suspense? No, it's not by making long pauses and adding appropriate music cues. Those enhance suspense, but they don't create it. There are actually four ingredients you need to be using if you wanna have suspense at play in your story. And I'm gonna tell you what those four ingredients are, but not yet. When most people think of suspense, they also think of words like scary or tense or thriller. But when you think of suspense that way, you are thinking about it as a type of story and not a storytelling technique. And I'm gonna do something that I don't like doing and that's use the term genre. That was vile, you owe me big. I hate that term and it causes so much confusion and I'll have to make a video about why you shouldn't use that G word at some point. But most of you think that suspense, the tool of storytelling is the same thing as the G of suspense. And they are vastly different and not related at all. So in talking about suspense, we are not talking about a type of story. We're talking about a tool of storytelling. And it doesn't matter what type of story you are telling or what kind of cake you are baking, if you want to use that metaphor, you can always employ the storytelling tool of suspense. But along with that, we tend to think suspense only creates negative emotions in the audience, that it makes them scared when we use it, or makes them worried, or it makes them terrified in a way. But that's only half of what suspense actually is. Because suspense can also create in the audience the emotions of hope, and of expectation, and of happiness. You're watching that rom-com and you know a wedding is coming and this couple that you've been rooting for is finally gonna get married. Maybe, if the wedding happens as planned and there's a good chance it won't, but it might. Okay, this is suspense. In fact, the very definition of suspense is a state or feeling of excited or anxious uncertainty about what may happen. And in storytelling, suspense isn't an either or, it's actually a both and event a state of feeling excited and anxious about what may happen. Both hope and fear. Those two emotions that drive the storytelling of every story. And this is the first of our four ingredients that suspense must have at play. But it's not just including hope and fear. It's amping up the hope and fear. You must be tapping the hope and fear of the audience, making them hope for something while at the same time fearing the opposite. And it can't be subtle. It's not over the top, but it's also not under the table. I'm apparently going for a metaphor record in this video. This means in your writing, if you want to incorporate suspense, you have to make sure you are tracking both the hope and the fear for an upcoming event. And you do that in the writing. Here's an example of what I mean. Mary's in the shower, letting the water wash over her. The water drowns out all other sound. But then the shower curtain is torn aside. Mary spins. Before Mary screams, the attacker raises a massive bread knife and begins slashing at Mary, who has nowhere to go. There's no hope and fear here. It's just the events. Now, compare that to the actual scene from Hitchcock's Psycho. The noise of the shower drowns out any sound. The door is then slowly and carefully closed, and we see the shadow of a woman fall across the shower curtain. Mary's back is turned to the curtain. The white brightness of the bathroom is almost blinding. Suddenly, we see the hand reach up, grasp the shower curtain, rip it aside. As she turns in response to the feel and sound of the shower curtain being torn aside, a look of pure horror erupts in her face. A low, terrible groan begins to rise up out of her throat. A hand comes in the shot. The hand holds an enormous bread knife. The flint of the blade shatters the screen to an almost total silver blankness. The slashing, an impression of a knife slashing as if tearing at the very screen, ripping the film. Over it, the brief gulps of screaming and then silence and then the dreadful thump as Mary's body falls in the tub. 
The story in both of those is the exact same. Mary's in the shower, an attacker comes in and kills her. But the tracking of the hope and fear is different in those stories. And I'm guessing that you are more engaged in Hitchcock's version than my attempt at trying to write that version really, really bad. Okay, and this is what you must be doing if you want to bring suspense to bear. You have to track the hope and fear for the reader. But that's just the first ingredient of suspense of the four. The second, the second part involves information exchange, specifically what you are allowing the audience to know and what you're keeping hidden from them. The term for giving information to the audience you've heard before, it's exposition, which is simply information the audience needs to know to make sense of the story. And if you're telling a regular story, you simply make sure the audience has the information they need at just the right time. But with suspense, you are intentionally holding some information in reserve. It doesn't matter what that information is, but you're going to keep information from the audience. And this forces the audience to be curious about what is happening. In our example from Psycho, one example of this is the enormous bread knife. The audience doesn't know about the bread knife until we need to know about the bread knife. But it's not just props and things like that at play when it comes to sharing information. The other information you must give the audience you must give them a hint, an inkling, a vision of what is to come. And this plays a bit on the hope and fear too, but you're letting the audience know in a very clear way, hey, something of note is gonna happen. It might be good, it might be bad, but something's about to happen. And without this hint of information, the audience has nothing to look forward to, which will kill any suspense you're wanting to create before you even get started. In Psycho, this bit of information is not just that someone is in the bathroom with Mary, but that it's a woman who's in the bathroom with Mary. Now, if you're familiar with Psycho, you know that this is Norman Bates dressed up as his mother. Sorry, spoiler. But that's more information that we get later in the story. Withholding information until the appropriate time is a key ingredient of creating suspense. So for our ingredients so far, we've got amped up hope and fear and information for and withheld from the audience. The third thing of our four is you must be including dramatic irony as part of suspense. Now, dramatic irony is another storytelling technique. And I hope you're realizing that for you to be able to kick suspense out of the gate, just to get it started, you're actually blending a few storytelling techniques together. And dramatic irony is where the audience knows more than a character in your story. Usually that means the protagonist, but not always. So the audience knows something that a character doesn't know. Now, to be clear, you can have dramatic irony without having suspense. Dramatic irony is its own storytelling technique, but you cannot have suspense without including dramatic irony. And what dramatic irony is doing is it is marrying the first two things together, the amped up hope and fear and the information for and withheld from the audience. And when all three of these things are pulled together, suspense is born. And in our example from Psycho, we know more than Mary. We, the audience, know more. We know someone else is in the bathroom and we even know it's a woman. Mary doesn't know yet. And this is where suspense begins. The heightened emotion, the information, and the dramatic irony. Now suspense begins. But these three only get suspense started. And there is a critical, critical fourth element of suspense. And that fourth element, that fourth ingredient, is what helps you sustain the suspense for as long as you want to sustain it. It gives it legs so you can have it really long or really short. And I am 100% gonna pull suspense apart. But first, if you're new to this channel, this is for all you new people. You too, like Renuri, can ask questions by sending me an email or dropping it in the comments below. I do read every comment and I will get to your email. More than anything, I just wanna help you become a master storyteller and an effective screenwriter. So if I can help you, please let me know how. If you want my help with your scripts, be sure to check out the links below or send me an email and ask. Ooh, the suspense for what you're gonna comment or email me. Now, I've given you some hope 
then I can help you become a better screenwriter if you want my help. I've given you some information, but not all of it. I'll give you the information you're wanting if you reach out. And dramatic irony is at play because you know something I don't. You know the questions and the struggles you have that you're having right now. I can guess, but I don't know for sure. I don't know what those are. I can't read minds. I mean, I'm good, but I'm not that good. And now all that's left is how long will the suspense last? Now, up to this point, the first three of our four ingredients of suspense are all storytelling related. But this last one is what makes suspense so hard to do and why, when you try to create suspense, it falls flat. Perhaps because you're thinking that the fourth ingredient is also storytelling related. Well, it isn't. It's story related. Hope and fear end for the audience when there's nothing else to hope for or fear. Withholding information from the audience, that moment ends once the audience knows the information that you're withholding. Dramatic irony ends for the audience once the character catches up and learns what the audience already knows. So the fourth piece of suspense? Nope, not that. Yeah, whatever you're thinking, it's not that. Because what sustains suspense is unpredictability in your story. In Psycho, there is suspense in this moment, in this shower scene, because our emotions have been heightened, we learn some critical information, and we know more than Mary knows. But once the knife comes out and starts slashing, no more suspense, because the story events have dictated when the suspense ends. Now, the suspense for Mary could have continued. I mean, maybe the woman intruder comes in, watches Mary, and then leaves and then we're worried about it. And then the next day, Mary gets back in the shower and the door opens again. And this time the attacker kills Mary. So you can pull out the suspense longer, but it is dictated by the story. But you have to make sure your story stays unpredictable. Now Hitchcock probably knew he couldn't sustain the suspense if Mary had been unharmed the first time, only to be harmed later. The audience would have predicted that turn of events and it wouldn't have been as effective. So as soon as the audience can either guess what the resolution of the suspense actually is, or once the resolution of the suspense actually happens, there's no more suspense. A predictable story has zero suspense, even if you're including the first three ingredients. Why? Well, because it's predictable. The audience can guess the resolution of whatever event you're trying to create suspense around. And once they know, all hope and fear is gone. They don't need to know the information you're withholding and they'll know the dramatic irony is gonna be resolved. So there's no more suspense. So the secret sauce of this suspense cake, unpredictability. Now wait one second, because you may not know what predictability actually is in a story context. And I won't make you wait, it's this. Predictability in a story is not concerned with what happens in the story. It's concerned with how it happens in the story. And this is why you hear advice about how you should ditch the first two or three ideas you have because they're wrong or bad or cliche, but it's not because they're wrong or bad or cliche. It's because they're predictable. The audience is gonna guess those too. They're the first things you thought of. They're the first things the audience is gonna think of. And then they'll know the resolution and your story will be predictable. You know, predictability in a story is 100% avoidable. And you can create suspense using the three storytelling techniques, hope and fear, information withholding, and dramatic irony, but you can only sustain that suspense if you avoid predictability in your screenplay. And if you wanna know how to avoid predictability, you should watch this right here. Please don't forget about all the fun buttons and the links below, and when you go to tell a story, add in some suspense and tell a story that matters. See you later.